Kelly, and here I had a question I saw online that I actually wanted to answer. I thought it was really interesting. And I'm going to read this here off my phone just to do some justice. But uh, gentlemen says, serious question. Snow plowing residential driveways have 40 to 50 plow customers right now. He's getting three to five calls a day for more work. Um, but he doesn't want 120 plus residential driveways to plow. He currently has three trucks and can handle them with the equipment and operators he already has in place. Problem is he hates snow plowing. Um, but he does it as a source of extra income for the winter and to keep his regular customers happy. Thoughts, should he take them, don't take them, sub them out? Well, I think this actually is a pretty interesting question here uh, as we're settling into a very early winter in the Northeast. Uh, my first knee-jerk reaction is, well, most contractors, unless snow removal is their sole business, probably don't like snow removal. It, it is a necessary evil. But if done right, it can be an extremely good profit source in the winter. In addition, what we find with a lot of lawn care contractors um, that don't really do snow as a full-time endeavor and take it seriously is they seriously erode their profits from the following year. And what I mean by that is um, probably to this example, if you have the overhead of the trucks and you have these laborers that you are either paying salary or putting on unemployment, um, you may be making a ton of money in the summer, but as we go into the winter, it's, it's basically taking the profits and the margins that you've built and just eroding them. So my opinion would be, yes, definitely go in and take these customers. But the way you spin it is, is you want to create a higher uh, lifetime value of these clients in a reoccurring service, so especially in the Northeast or in the snow belt. This is a big issue. So a lot of people we work with at Simple Growth um, out in the, uh, the South or Southwest, they just run forever until the service cancels. Um, and in the Northeast and parts of the Midwest, this just isn't possible, um, or at least a lot of people don't think it's possible. So the way you can tackle this is, is actually go out and I, I would suggest bringing these people in, but right now there's scarcity and there's a need and, the, and there's there's this panic, very similar to the spring when the first weeds pop up. And you can sell as much lawn care as you physically can in the first three to four weeks. Um, price really isn't an option. Well, you've got that advantage right now. So you've got the bodies, you've got the equipment. What I would do is break it into three or four zones based on the equipment and start popping those new customers in there and start building route density. So what you're going to do is kind of take those calls coming in and then you're going to go to offline marketing and go into those specific neighborhoods using a product um, for every door direct mail or a product like Send Gym where you're doing direct mailing to the specific neighborhood. And now we're going to build that density. Um, to answer the second part of the question, though, we're not going to let those people for snow plowing on your schedule unless we put them in a year round package or one of your core services. I would I would opt with the second option, the core service. So we're going to upsell them lawn mowing or fertilization, whatever those core gateway services are, there's a lot less friction. So in order to get on the snow plowing list at the regular season price, we're not going to discount it because the season's already started. We are going to have to sign a contract or an agreement to pay for and sign up for lawn mowing or fertilization. So now we're going to create a year round revenue stream and those profits that are eroding from the summer by you spreading out uh, your overhead over the winter and not having enough work for those three trucks and three gentlemen or ladies running those plow trucks. Now it's going to solve that problem. But now we're going to reinforce that branding and the customer service 12 months a year. Um, so the second step is now that we brought those new plow customers in, we've created more route density, we've created more sales. So we're going to have a higher profit margin. We're going to keep those existing customers happy or uh, customers happy as well. But the existing employees are going to get the work they need. So we're going to keep them off unemployment and keep them engaged in the culture and putting money in their pockets. So the first answer to the first question, yes, we take those extra snowplow people. The only caveat is if you want to sign up for the snow plowing late season, you're going to, have to sign up for one of our gateway services. That's going to be your lawn mowing, your fertilization weed control. The next step to that is when we hit them in the spring after the first one or two times around their property and we wild them what we're actually doing with our summer services. At that point, we're going to circle around and upsell higher ancillary services to up that lifetime value again. So now we've got them in for the winter for snow plowing. We've locked them into either mowing or fertilizing for the spring. And now once we've got them into the first mowing 
or two, we're going to go in and upsell either aeration overseeding, uh, any of the services that may be there uh, seasonal wise. So we're going to set up a marketing calendar for every month and start doing seasonal upsells. So we want to take that normal lifetime value and keep moving it up as we go. Um, and then we want to get them as a year round client. So we've got them for summer work and winter work and we're pre-selling them so we lock them in. So now we have a reoccurring revenue. So if we ever go out and want to sell this business or go out and recruit more employees that are year-round employees, we have a reoccurring revenue stream that's going to support growth. And if you're the gentleman or lady that absolutely hates plowing, I can relate to that. After 24 years in the plowing industry, uh, the last several seasons, uh, I hired a gentleman to run my whole entire lawn care and snow removal company. Uh, I plowed maybe a total of 10 to 15 minutes last winter. It was one of the heaviest seasons we've ever had. But that extra cash flow and that larger customer base is going to allow you to pull up above the day-to-day -day operations and working on working in the business and not on the business, as Michael Gerber preaches. That's what's going to allow you to do that. So one of the, the hurdles to growth there that we see is, is that mindset in a company that's in the Northeast and the Midwest that has to do snow removal, that it's not a core service to cover the extra three to four months of overhead. So uh, I would recommend go out, lock them up. But now that you've kind of got that scarcity and urgency, get them to sign up for one of your core gateway services in the spring, service them once or twice, upsell more higher ancillary service. And now it's going to be a two pronged effect where we're going to go in and pretty much at two different points immediately raise that client lifetime value, raise your profits, and hopefully going into the next winter, you don't have to be in that plow truck. You can either manage it from the office or hopefully pay somebody uh, to manage that operations for you. So any comments or questions, drop them below. I uh, apologize if I haven't been online answering these questions as much as I usually have. Um, things have just been pretty crazy with the Simple Grow team going into 2019. But um, so look for a little more regularity here uh, going into 2019. But uh, I would take those plowing accounts, lock them up with the summer services, then upsell the ancillary services. Uh, and, and as you pick up those new clients, do some offline marketing to build some more route density in the neighborhood you're already in. Uh, one of our most profitable plow accounts uh, that we had in our, in our portfolio was about 29 seconds average drive time between properties. Um, so at some point, I'll, I'll, I'll take a screenshot of that map, but it, it it's the fact that once you're in that neighborhood, you want to go in and hammer down um, that advertising. And it's not just once, it's three to five times. So they're going to need to see your trucks. They're going to see your logos. They're going to have to have that brand reinforced before they recognize you. So you're in the power play position right now. If they're calling you and desperate for plowing, upsell those services. Uh, David Long, any specific advice on how um, to word this to the client? Absolutely. Uh, so, David, as we go in, uh, we're going to basically say, unfortunately, we're not accepting new one-time clients, but we are accepting full-time clients. And in order to give you the best consistent service, especially with plow damage in the spring, if that's something you repair, uh, that's going to allow us to coordinate that with your summer services. Or if you don't traditionally offer uh, lawn damage repair, this is a great opportunity to wrap that in there. So it's a it's an added value. What's in it for them? Uh, so you really want to you want to frame it as what's in it for them. Uh, but right now, I don't think the way you frame it is going to be a massive hurdle. Uh, in the past, in our company in New York, we've had waiting lists of three to four hundred people by the time we've hit September. Um, and we just didn't have the bandwidth or, or subcontractors to do it. And then at certain points when we looked at our overhead recovery and financial model, uh, that $600 or 600 residential driveways on top of the 70 commercial parking lots that we did was kind of the sweet spot. We really didn't want to get out of that. But um, you know, in, in retrospect, if we had the bandwidth to add another 150, 200 driveways, I would have gone after it and saying, this definitely needs to be a year round service um, or we're not going to service you. So that that's going to put you in that power position. I want to say what's up to David Heath as well. Um, hey, if you guys are watching too, we're going to go live on the Service Autopilot page at uh, 315 Central, uh, 415 Eastern with uh, Jonathan Batoshnak, Martha Woodward, and Scott Howard for uh, a little preview of the regional event there and doing some live Q&A as well. So uh, that should be another killer uh, event later this afternoon. So I'll talk to you guys later. I'll keep an eye on this video here for the next few days. Any other questions regarding this, uh, feel free to drop them in and I will uh, answer them live or in the uh, feed underneath. So I hope everybody's having a, a good day today and uh, we'll see you.